Angry Birds is a franchise I have a lot of nostalgia for. I like the games, the videos, and even Angry Birds tunes. And Angry Birds Star Wars is one of the first games I got into. This game happens to have a console port, same with the trilogy, and if this video gets a lot of support, I'll play on that as well. But they're both delisted. So I had to get a physical copy off of eBay, which thankfully wasn't that expensive, so I can get this game's platinum trophy. There are 51 trophies in this game, so let's get into it. So if you somehow don't know anything about Angry Birds, each level gives you some birds that you need to fling into the structure on the other side to pop all the pigs. Most of the birds have special powers to help you out as well. This game puts Angry Birds into the world of Star Wars, specifically the original trilogy, and it themes everything around Star Wars. On the console version, there are six main worlds, Tatooine, the Death Star, Hoth, Cloud City, Path of the Jedi, and the exclusive levels, which are only on this version. Our journey starts at Tatooine, which introduces our first bird, Luke Skywalker. Well, that sound is nostalgic, man. I have not heard that sound in ages. In the first few levels, he's the same as the red bird usually is, having no special powers. I got three stars on this first level, and I will need to get three stars on every level in Tatooine, and I have to do the same for almost every other world, but for now, I just wanted to beat the levels, and after completing the second one, I got my first trophy. Impressive. My first sticker. Let's go. A few levels later, I'm introduced to Obi-Wan. He can force push objects, and I will need to push 2,000 blocks for a trophy. Of course, I didn't get that trophy now, but I got a different one for unlocking my first secret. Thank the Maker. Later on, Luke gets access to his lightsaber, which does what you'd probably expect. And similar to Obi-Wan, I need to destroy 2,000 blocks with it, but I had to start off small by destroying 50 blocks. Oh, Jedi Initiate. The trophy just kept on flying in, and on the same level, I made a Stormtrooper shoot another trooper. There's no one here? Stormtrooper shot another trooper. Wait, he did? I didn't even see that. And I got another trophy on the same level, and this one was for collecting my 10th sticker. Most impressive. On the next level, I decided to try out the Mighty Falcon. You can use this whenever you want as long as you have a charge, and similar to the Mighty Eagle, it sends the Millennium Falcon to deal some big damage, and when you use it, it replaces the stars with the destruction meter, and I will need to get that meter to 100% 50 times for a trophy, but for now, I just got one for using it for the first time. Mighty Launch I didn't even get that dude up top, I'm done. I'm... Horrible. During the same level, I also deflected three lasers with the lightsaber, which is a really good strat for getting three stars on levels, but it can be pretty wonky trying to get the lasers to go where you want them to go. Prominent Jedi? A few levels later, they added Han Solo to the mix. He shoots three lasers at whatever you aim at using the analog stick or the touchpad. During that level, I got two trophies. The first one was for popping 300 stormtroopers. Simple pigs and nonsense. 300 stormtroopers popped, okay. And the second one was for completing my 10th level using only one bird. Oh, 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 oh. Let's go. Oh, the birds will be with you. For some reason, I was trying to get three stars and everything, even though I didn't need to yet, which was causing me to restart the level a bunch, and I eventually restarted for the 100th time. Nah. Lack of faith. I knew I was gonna get that soon. I already know what that's for. Oh, here we go. And it was worth it. It was worth it. And later, I decided to try to get 100% destruction with the Falcon again. Falcon escape. In the next level, I noticed this little thing down here. This thing is a golden probe. These are in some of the levels, and if you destroy them, which I did for a trophy... There we go. Probe Explorer. It sends you into a secret level where you play as R2-D2 and C-3PO. I will need to destroy four more of these for another trophy. And then I finish Tatooine. Okay. That's no moon. Alright, that's the end of Tatooine. A one- I ended off with a one star, but that's alright. But that star, baby. Huh. 
After I finished Tatooine, instead of moving to the Death Star, I decided to get the four multiplayer trophies out of the way. The multiplayer is completely local, so thankfully I didn't need to find a squad for it, and you can either play cooperatively or against each other. The first trophy was for playing a match with four players, which doesn't actually require four controllers like most people would think. You can just continuously press X and it'll register more players. I think this is if you want to pass a controller to other people rather than have four controllers. I also got another trophy for earning my first bonus score, which I'll explain shortly. Alright. There is no try. And well look at you. So during the levels, if I complete one of these 10 tasks, it'll show up when the level is complete. None of them were hard, but some did take a few attempts just because the level wasn't good enough to reach some of the requirements. So here are the trophies for 5 scores and all of the scores. No more training do you require. The force is strong, let's go! Now that the multiplayer was done, it was time for the Death Star, where I was introduced to the pilots. These guys had the same ability as the original blues, where they split into three birds when you press the button. I was also introduced to Chewbacca, who again is pretty much the same as his OG counterpart, but he is a little more powerful. While I got to use Chewie, I went for a trophy where I had to get a turret to shoot him six times with a direct hit. I thought this first level with him would be good since there's a turret right there and he can easily get shot, but for some reason, it wouldn't pop. The only reason I can think of is the area he's getting hit at isn't direct enough, but I'm not sure. I tried this for a few minutes, and I went on for so long that I ended up getting this trophy instead. Magnificent Grumble, I got another trophy! That's not what I meant! What even is that? 300 blocks smash? I didn't even mean to go for that. Eventually, I gave up on that level and tried to do on the next level, and lo and behold... There we go, walking carpet! Why did it not work on the other level? Even though the trophy guide said that, I had to go to a different trophy guide to find it. As I was making my way through the Death Star, if I ever ran out of birds with only one pig left, I let the level fail instead of restarting so I could get this trophy, and eventually, I got that trophy. Fork side of the force. I'm just good at the game, I guess. Definitely. Before I finished the Death Star, I destroyed 500 blocks with the lightsaber. Jedi Knight. The final level was the first boss fight of the game. I wasn't ready for the boss yet. I, I, I completely forgot. Honestly, I kind of forgot there was a boss on Death Star. Freaking Vader, bro. I beat it. I'm definitely not 3-star that, but... Disturbing Misobedience. Yeah, that was terrible. <laughs> Well, who cares? And there it goes. Now it was time for Hoth, where I was introduced to the final new bird, Leia. Her ability allows her to lift objects towards her. Besides that, the trophy started to slow down, but I did get two before the end. The first one was for destroying 1000 blocks with Han's laser. Ultimate laser shooter. And the second one was for popping three pigs with one laser. Target shooter? So we're gonna skip to the end, but remember that I'm gonna talk more about the levels later. The final level was another boss fight, this time against a swarm of Minox. What did I just hit? Nah, reset on that, bro. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Okay! Okay! Is that grandma to that fool? I can, but it doesn't do anything. Wait, what? I don't know how he died, but I just won. Transport is away. I three started! Let's go! And we just came out of. The Sarlacc? I know it's an Exegorth, I just didn't know what I was talking about, that's all. <clears throat> anyway, the next world is Path of the Jedi. This world takes place in Dagobah when Luke is training with Yoda. Most of the levels only allow me to use Luke, but other birds are here as well. Path of the Jedi has some of the hardest levels, which you'll see more of later. 
One big gimmick of Path is his Vader dummy. Whenever he's alive, he uses the force to lock some objects in place and they barely move in this state. If you manage to take him down, all of the force affected objects will fall down, but you don't actually need to take him down to complete the level. I got two more trophies during Path. The first one was for smashing 500 blocks with the pilot. Skilled Pilot. The second one was for playing for 5 hours, which is one of 3 hour based trophies. Finally! Finally, bruh! I knew once I got rid of that, that was an opportunity. I knew it. Starbird fan. Here's the final level. Sadly, it's not a boss. Oh, 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 oh. Patience. Nah, he didn't. That works. <laughs> Courage of Jedi. Let's go. Let's go, the upgrade. Yep, Luke is now a Jedi and his new green lightsaber is a bit more destructive than his old one. The final world is not Cloud City because there are no trophies for it, but instead is the exclusive levels. As I said, these are exclusive to the console version. What makes them special is that they give some of the birds upgrades that aren't seen in any other level. Otherwise, they're pretty much extensions of the other worlds, no new themes or anything like that. I only got one trophy during this, which was for force pushing 2,000 blocks. Force learn. And here's the final level. Reach that. There we go. The circle is now complete. Hey, that's the name of the Force Unleashed 2 Platinum. <laughs> and that's all the levels. Except it really isn't. This port only has half a Cloud City, which normally has 40 levels. It doesn't have Endor or Death Star 2. It would have been cool if they had these, even if there weren't any extra trophies for them. But I don't get why they cut the game short. But that's a topic for another day. Now that I beat the levels, I moved on to the remaining miscellaneous trophies. We'll go over the collectible trophies first, starting with the remaining 4 probe levels. There are 8 to find with the probes, but 9 more are found by getting a certain amount of stars. I only need to find 5 probes, and I don't need to complete the levels either. So I just found 5 of the easiest probes to destroy, and eventually, that was it. Probe Gatherer, let's go. The other collectible trophy is Jettison Jetpacks. This is for collecting all 5 jetpacks. Similar to the probes, these are found in some levels, but they don't give you a bonus level. Instead, they're half of what you need to unlock the Boba Fett missions, the other half being to complete Cloud City. So once again, I just went and collected them, and eventually I got the last one. Oh, it's not doing anything. Jonathan Jetpacks. With the collectibles out of the way, now I'll go over the other random trophies, starting with popping a Stormtrooper with a TIE Fighter's wing. Imperial Entanglement. Continuing with more friendly fire, the next one was for popping a Minoc with another Minoc in six different levels. I mostly just used Leia for this so she could pull the Minocs together. Minoc Tangle. Let's go. Speaking of Leia, I also lifted 500 blocks with her weapon. Fatal Attraction. I didn't even pull anything. I did nothing. <laughs> what? Finally, I smashed 25 blocks with a single flight of Boba Fett. Boba can be found in some Cloud City levels, as well as every Boba Fett mission, and I got the trophy during one of those. When something hits him, his jetpack goes crazy, sending him into random areas. It's a little tough to get him to hit 25 blocks, but if you find the right level, which was B10 for me, you can get this done. Blockbuster, there we go. There are four more miscellaneous trophies, but I got them during the next step. Before I started that step, I got the remaining 49 100% with the Falcon. I just repeated the first level over and over to do this, and I had 62 Falcons saved up. I got 100% 99% of the time. I say that because this happened once. Eight. What? Bruh, that wasn't 100? How? But that never happened again, and I eventually got the last one. Hyperspace. And now the difficulty starts to ramp up because I need to get three stars in every level. 
Getting 3 stars requires me to get as many points as I can, and the way to optimize my points is to destroy more objects with as few birds as possible. For at least 80% of the levels, I had no idea how to try to get 3 stars, so I searched up 3 star guides and chipped away at them. Now just because I had a guide doesn't mean that I was guaranteed to get 3 stars. I had to make sure I lined everything up properly, and I had to hope that things broke the same way as they did on the guide. There's surprisingly a lot of luck involved with this game. I started off with Tatooine, which had two levels that sucked. This one relied on this stormtrooper in the back to shoot the remaining pigs, while also not shooting itself too early or making me use another bird. But that moron did exactly what I didn't want it to do most of the time, and my bird would miss the fuse a lot. Another one was this one where I needed this glass block to fall down, but it just wouldn't do it. Of course, once it finally fell, I got the 3 star. That's pretty much how the experience went for every world. Things just not doing what they're supposed to do. Before I finished Tatooine, I destroyed my 2000th block with the saber. Ooh, Jedi Master. And then I 3 star the final level. I think that's it. Tatooine All Stars. Let's go. Next up was the Death Star. The Death Star had some pretty annoying levels, mostly due to luck, but there's one level that really gave me a hard time. Look at this level. The strat is to get Han to shoot this block at an angle that allows it to bounce between the same block on the opposite side and also hit this TNT. Here's the thing, you need to be very quick to get that to work, and remember, I'm on a controller, so I can't just tap the screen to be as quick as possible, I gotta line up the shot first with this slow movement. I found that doing a quick swipe with the touchpad was the way, but doing that makes the shot very random. And even if the laser went to the right place, of course the game didn't let everything fall down properly. So this was easily in my top 5 toughest levels. Nothing else needs to be mentioned, that just takes the cake. I did get the 15 hour trophy though. Is that enough though? It is, and I got through Starbird Fan. Then I 3 start the boss level and I was done. Dang it. Oh wait, never mind. Was that it? Death Star All-Stars, finally! After 3 star the Death Star, instead of doing Hoth, I did the exclusive levels since there were only 20 of them. They still weren't easy, but I at least had way less levels to do. There were two levels that were the most annoying for me. This one where I just needed to shoot this barricade and then take down Vader so that the circles fall was annoying because this little runt would just survive most of it, or not enough would get destroyed, so you know what that means. The other level was this one with some turrets. My original strat was to get Luke to bounce off this turret, and it's supposed to shoot most of the stuff down, but that would not happen for me. Either Luke would destroy the turret, or the turret would not face the right way. Because of how much luck was involved with this, I switched to a different one. This new strat was way easier, and I got the trophy, but I almost didn't. I didn't mean to do that! Please tell me that's still, that's still 3 star. Please tell me that's still a 3 star. I did not mean to do that. I hit my touchpad. All too easy. Thank you. Finally. I, ooh, if I would have hit my touchpad twice, I would have lost a 3 star, dude. I'll put the alternate strategy in the description. I don't recommend the one on the trophy guide. Every other strat in the video is good, but not the one for this level. Now it's time for Hoth. A common theme for Hoth is that one pig would survive when I finally get the strat right. This example right here is completely illogical. How are you alive? You're floating in space! That is not survivable, bro! Another example is this level. So the strategy was annoying enough, thanks to this fool. When I finally popped that fool, look what happened. This game sucks, bro. This game sucks. I finally get rid of that annoyance, and that dude's still alive. This game sucks, bro. Of course, I eventually got it, but I spent at least 30 minutes on that level alone. There was also this one where I needed to make the ad, ad do all the work for me, but getting him into the right spot was so bad. Before I finished Hoth, I flung my 5,000th bird. Oh, fly bird fly! And here's the end. That works. That works for me. Hoth All Stars. Nice. Finally, this Path of the Jedi. Three-starring paths was pretty mixed. Some levels were easy, while others were pretty tough. There are two levels I want to mention. 
This level is another example of why controller sucks for this game. I needed to send Luke into this TNT, and it would destroy everything except for this pig. So then I'm supposed to send Han into this pig, and shoot the other pig, and the rope holding this block in place to deal with this other guy. However, I needed to be really quick with the shots, or else I'd hit the terrain. Again, if I could tap the screen, that'd be super easy, but since I need to line up the shot, it made it unnecessarily difficult. So the best solution was to hope that the top pig would somehow die after the TNT exploded so I didn't have to be as specific with the blaster. With how much luck is involved with that, it took a while for him to die, but eventually he died and I was able to get my 3 stars. The second level is the last level. I needed to push these blocks toward the structure and make them bounce off the turret to make it shoot them as well. We probably already know where this is going. It felt really satisfying to get this tough level done and get my final 3 star. Path of the Jedi All-Stars, bro. That was- that last level was so freaking tough, man. Now you would think that's the end of the Platinum, right? Oh man, I wish it was. For some reason, the devs thought that 3-starring everything wasn't enough. Now I had to get a high score on every world! This is a completely unnecessary step that I feel was just added to spite the player. So now I needed to find tougher strategies to maximize my points. Thankfully, the exclusive levels were not required, but it still sucked. There isn't even much to add. You know how this would go. Lots of luck, lots of restarting, lots of just not having fun doing something that really does not need to exist. Dude, that's like five freaking times in a row! While doing this, I reached the 30 hour mark. Starbird Addict. So I'm just gonna skip the levels and show the trophies, but know that this was easily the worst part of the grind, and it really has me worried about the Angry Birds trilogy, since that is rated a 9 out of 10, and can take 200 plus hours. Tattooing the Force, let's go! Death Star the Force! I didn't think I was that close, let's go! Hot the Force! Let's go! <laughs> yes! Finally! Path of the Jedi the Force and... Congratulations! Let's freaking go, man! Finally, bro! It took me 41 hours to get this platinum. I hope you all enjoyed the video. If you did, please consider liking and subscribing. This video gets a lot of support. I'll go for the Angry Birds Shoji, which I'll probably regret, but I'll do it. And if you want to see another Platinum video, there's a video on the end screen, and I'll see you on the next one. Peace out.